hello student good afternoon yeah so um, this is the second lecture in this online lecture note series okay so i hope you have already um, learned from my last video and um, if you have any queries any question from my last video please write those thing on the comment section so that i can answer you um, as soon as possible okay so today we will learn um, another new topic so uh, this is so today's topic is covariance and correlations covariance and correlations okay so uh, we will learn this uh, new terminology what is covariance correlations but before that uh, let me uh, let me start with uh, one small uh, proposition so um, uh, you recall yesterday class we defined about uh, expectation of uh, functions of uh, more than one random variables now suppose we have uh, two random variables so let x and y be two independent independent uh, random variables and you have two functions and for uh, this is and you have two functions and G and H we have the following with the following so what we have so we have expectation of GX into HY so you take uh, the product of uh, uh, these two new random variable gx and hy and the expected values is nothing but expectation of gx into expectation of hy okay so this is true for uh, independent random variables x and y so um, how to uh, how to prove this thing so proof obviously you need to assume so i'm assuming that both x and y are same type of random variable same, I mean, same type means both are either discrete or both are either continuous random variables so um, let me do it for any of this so so assume so you can you can the proof is similar so i if you can prove for discrete you can prove for continuous and so so and so so um, so assume that both Y are 
discrete okay then how to prove it then the proof is like this then you know that the left hand side expectation of gx hy by the formula which we discuss my um, previous online lecture notes so this will be double sum over x and then over y and then you remember uh, gx hy into the joint and uh, joint probability mass function so what was the joint probability mass function suppose the joint probability mass function is of this form px y okay now because we know that uh, x and y are uh, independent so the joint probability mass function is product of marginal mass function so i can write down it equal to sum over y sum over x gx hy and then the marginal probability mass function px of x and py of y okay now you see that uh, uh, this is gx px of x independent of y and the h y into p y or independent of x so we can um, we can take this thing outside the uh, sum and then then you can have this as summation over x gx px of x into summation over y hy py of y okay and now by definition the first sum is nothing but um, expectation of gx and the second sum is nothing but the expectation of hy okay so, so this is the proof for uh, the cases when both x and y are discrete and variable and uh, uh, for uh, x and y continuous and variable continuous uh, the proof is similar the proof is Uh, similar so uh, uh, sorry similar uh, so so um, let as uh, homework okay so this is uh, basic observation with the help of this so now uh, so this is going to, we are going to apply these um, results uh, in today's lecture so now we are going to define uh, the main topic of today's thing so covariance so what is covariance
So how to define covariance? So suppose we have two random variables x and y. So uh, x and y are two random variables. Then we define the covariance. So we generally write down this symbol C O V covariance of x and y. And this is by definition uh, this is expectation of x minus expectation of x into y minus expectation of y okay so this is the definition of covariance and if you uh, expand it if we expand this uh, uh, this are number variable. So inside you have x minus expectation of x into y minus expectation of y. This product of two random variables. If we expand it, so we can also uh, write down this as expectation of x y minus x time expectation of y minus expectation of x time y plus expectation of x into expectation of y okay now we know that expectation has a linearity property so we recall yesterday so we can write down using the property of expectation uh, from our last online lectures I can write down that this is expectation of xy and then uh, you, you notice that uh, uh, the x time expectation of y so expectation of y is a constant so it can come out and hence the second term will be expectation of x into expectation of y And the third term is similarly expectation of x into expectation of y and the last term is constant so expectation will be the same thing so expectation of x into expectation of y. So, so one term get cancelled, so you can you can cancel one of the expectation terms, and then the final answer will be expectation of x y minus expectation of X time expectation of Y. Okay, so this is uh, one more uh, working uh, formula for covariance. Okay, so now note that uh, when X equal to Y, so when X equal to Y, then Covariance of x and y it becomes variance of x. Okay, so this is a simple observation. Covariance becomes variance, which is nothing but uh, expectation of x squared minus expectation of x whole square. Okay, clear. So um, now let us do some remark on uh, what we have just learned. So uh, now is note that uh, um, if x and y are independent and variable, then what happens? So if x and y 
are independent then what happen if x and y are independent then we know that um, this covariance of x y we write down as expectation of x into y minus expectation of x into expectation of y right this is the formula now you just prove that when x and y are independent then uh, this formula that uh, expectation of gx hy equal to expectation of gx into expectation of hy so here gx equal to x and hy equal to y so from this formula it is clear that expectation of the product of two independent random variable is the product of the individual expectation so you apply this uh, formula to get that uh, expectation of xy is nothing but product expectation of x into expectation of y and you already have the same thing here so they get cancels and the answer is zero so what does that mean that means uh, covariance is zero whenever x and y are independent random variables okay now the question um what about the converse so question what about the converse so uh, so what does that mean that means uh, if it is given that the covariance of x and y uh, when x and y are two random variables is zero does that mean that um, so so let me write down so covariance of x and y zero does it implies that x and y are independent and um, the unfortunately the answer is uh, false no so the covariance of x y zero uh, may not implies x and y are independent so for an example so let me give an example for you so suppose we have two random variable to say so so let me do it for discrete random variable so you have two discrete random variable so let me start with x so x is a discrete random variable so which is taking values say mm, say minus one zero and one and uh, the probability mass function is of this form p of 0 p of so when i say this i mean with respect to x p of minus 1 and mass function at 1 see 1 third oh, this is clearly a probability mass function you can easily find out okay and obviously uh, you can easily calculate that uh, the expectation of x it's zero okay so uh, by simple observation you can calculate that expectation is zero okay so now let me define um, another uh, from another uh, random variable discrete random variable y so i am defining y in terms of actually x so i am writing y is taking value zero if x not equal to zero so that means whenever x is taking the value minus one and one and y is taking value one if x equal to zero clear so this is a new random variable and you can easily check that uh, these two random variable x and y are uh, dependent 
Why it is dependent? Because you can find out um, uh, that um, uh, join uh, mass function is not a product of initial mass function. That is obvious. You can easily find out by the simple uh, formula. So uh, let me just draw it again. So suppose x is taking value say i, y is taking value j. So I can be either 0, 1, minus 1. Okay. J can be either 0 or 1. And then you have this field. Now you see that when i equal to 0, j so when i equal to 0 j cannot be 0 so this probability is 0 when i equal to 1 j cannot be 1 this probability is 0 so this is minus 1 then this cannot be 1 so it is 0 okay and also you know that probability for marginal distribution and this is one third this is one third this is one third okay and then this is so so that means this part is one third this part is one third so altogether this is two third uh, similarly this is one third so this is one third and this total probability is one okay so now you can easily find out that uh, you choose any of these in our um, inside um, boxes and you see that probability say x equal to 0 y equal to 0 is not the product of probability x equal to 0 into probability y equal to 0 so uh, so that is so clearly so thus x and y are not independent okay now let us find out uh, what is the covariance of x and y now you see that covariance um, uh, so, so covariance of x and y is a uh, product it is expectation of product of x and y And expectation of x and expectation of y now already showed that expectation of x equal to 0 so this part is 0 already you know that uh, so what is expectation of xy so now we look at xy so the way we define xy so xy is always 0 whenever x equal to 0 y is non zero so the product is 0 and um, Whenever x is 0, y is non zero. So, expectation so x y equal to 0. So, this implies the expectation of x y equal to 0, and hence the covariance is 0. So, what we just proved, we just proved that you there may exist uh, two random variables whose covariance is 0 but it does not mean that they are uh, independent random variable they may be dependent okay so uh, okay so now let us do some properties of expectations so some properties so maybe property number one so you, you see that the covariance of x y is kind of symmetric so you can write down covariance of y x and the proof are uh, just uh, trivial so you can easily prove it and then i already told you that covariance of maybe let me write down again x x equal to variance of x okay what about covariance of say some constant x comma y 
and that is also you can easily check this is nothing but a times covariance of x y and also it is nothing but covariance of x a times y uh, A times covariance of y. Okay, so this uh, uh, this proper simple. Now let me tell you one more, and this is little bit uh, non-trivial. So if we have random variables, say x1, x2, xn, and then you can talk about the sum of x i equal to say one to in and random variables y1 y2 ym so we can talk about yj j equal to 1 to say m then uh, what about the covariance of these two new random variables and this will be nothing but double sum over i equal to 1 to n j equal to 1 to m and covariance of xi yj now this proof is uh, this is quite a proof but proof is also uh, uh, proof is uh, not difficult so let me just tell you the proof so maybe uh, for this proof so the proof of this fourth property so let me assume that uh, the expectation of uh, the individual x is something say mu i and expectation of is yj is something say new j okay so let me have this thing so up after the assumption so let me go to the new page so you can find out uh, the covariance formula so from the formula covariance of xi i equal to 1 to n summation yj j equal to 1 to m so uh, this is uh, by definition of covariance this is expectation of You remember this is summation of xi i equal to 1 to n minus um, uh, minus the expectation of this random variable which is nothing but summation over mu i i equal to equal to 1 to n and then we have a summation of our y j summation of our y j j equal to 1 to a m minus the expectation which is nothing but uh, summation over new j equal to 1 to a m okay so uh, 
and then you can write down this as expectation of the uh, the the uh, so this this term you can write down as i equal to one to n x i minus mu i and then uh, j equal to 1 to m y j minus mu j okay so uh, you can write down by this and then uh, obviously we can now take the sum together both the sum so we can write down as sum is one over i equal to 1 to n j equal to 1 to n and then xi minus my into yj minus new j okay so now uh, uh, we can take the expectation inside the sum because uh, you know that uh, as uh, expectation of sum of random variables is nothing but the sum of the expectation of random variables so you can write down this as um, double sum i equal to 1 to n and then j equal to 1 to n and then expectation of xi minus mu i into yj minus mu j now note that the inside expectation is nothing but the covariance of xi and yj and hence you can write down this as double sum sum over i equal to 1 to n j equal to 1 to m and then covariance of xi comma yj okay and this completes the proof so uh, you see that uh, if you have uh, sum of two random so both the random variables are sum of uh, more random variables so you can talk about uh, covariance of that in terms of sum of the covariance of individual pairwise random variables so now a uh, special case so when uh, x i s are y so yj suppose all y x s are y j s and m equal to n then you can have you know that this is the variance so you can write down that uh, variance of sum of our x i s so i equal to 1 to n so this is nothing but covariance of uh, x i s i equal to 1 to n and same same random variables x i i equal to 1 to n okay and now the formula what we derived uh, uh, this formula the formula 4 in the formula 4 we can write down that this is nothing but sum of our double sum of our i equal to um, okay so we, here you can write down j obviously so uh, it doesn't matter so it's just naming so uh, i equal to 1 to n j equal to 1 to n 
and then covariance of xi comma xj xi xj <coughs> Right now, so when i equal to j, then you have covariance of xi xj uh, xi xi, which is nothing but variance. So, we'll have uh, the term outside. So, you can separate this sum as i equal to j. When i equal to j, so you have n many terms, and then you can write down that variance of xi. Now, when i not equal to j, then you'll have. Uh, when i not equal to j so we can write down the double sum i not equal to j and then uh, both this is covariance of xi xj and uh, you can also ordering it you can also order it so you can write down say i less than j so if you see that like uh, there will be term like covariance of x1 x2 and also there will be term covariance of x2 x1 so uh, you know that covariance of x1 x2 and x2 x1 are same we are look at property one uh, this property covariance of x y equal to covariance of y x so within the property using the property one uh, so you can write down that this is nothing but i equal to one to n variance of xi plus twice double sum i say less than j covariance of xi comma by j as so you know that covariance of xi y xj equal to covariance of xj xi the property one so you have the final answer you can write down the variance of sum of random variable is nothing but uh, the sum of the variance and then uh, plus two times the double sum of covariance with uh, the ordering i less than j okay so uh, so as a matter of fact so um, uh, when uh, this so not So in x size are say pairwise. Suppose uh, uh, it is given that it is pairwise uh, pairwise uh, independent. Are independent then we know that uh, the covariance will be zero and hence uh, this then the covariance will be covariance of xi xj will be zero for all i not equal to j and hence we'll have variance of sum of xi i equal to 1 to n is nothing but sum of the variance sum of the variance of x is i equal to 1 to n okay so when uh, so for two random variables so special case so uh, when you have two random variables x and y so you can write down as uh, like this so you can write down so uh, so this is for independent so suppose x and y are not in independent but two random variables then you can write down that the variance of x plus y is nothing but the variance of x plus 
variance of y plus 2 times covariance of x and y. Clear? So this is the special formula for Okay, so uh, now maybe you can have some um, some of the examples. So you remember we discussed about sample mean yesterday, um, in my previous online lecture. So today we can define something called sample variance. So what is that sample variance? What is sample variance? So, uh, so uh, as before, so you have x1, x2, xn. These are IIDs. So, what is that mean? So, independent and identically distributed random variables. And uh, so we remember. So, uh, what does that mean? That means uh, the expectations uh, are all same, and their variance. All same, say sigma square, and we all we know that we define sample mean by x bar. You remember sample mean summation x i over n i equal to one to n. Now we define the sample variance. variance by this quantity what is this quantity so we, we write down by this symbol a square which is defined as summation of x i minus x bar squares divided by n minus 1 and then sum over i equal to 1 to n. So this is we define sample variance. And uh, these xi minus x bars are called, uh, these quantity are called xi minus x bars. So these xi minus x bars are called deviation. Okay, now you can, you can, uh, so this is, you can easily find out, so maybe I can give some exercise here, so, so homework, two, so you can find out or so that this, variance of sample mean is actually sigma square by n and expectation of sample variance expectation of sample variance square this is nothing but Okay, so this is you can easily find out. So, um, so and uh, so maybe one more example I can give you. So, for example, uh, whenever we, we call that we discuss about uh, binomial random variables. So you can write down the binomial random variable. So um, binomial random variable you can write down x as 
so there will be so what is that so x is a random variable which measures or counts the number of success in some finite number of trials so suppose there are n many trials so we can write down as so this x1 x2 xn and what is this xi each of the xi's are what so these are uh, new random variable so you can write down as one if the ith uh, trial is a success i trial is a success and zero otherwise So x1, uh, x1 will be 1 if the first one is success, x, x1 will be 0 if the first one is not a success failure like that. So, and by that x capital X count exactly the number of success. Okay. So now you see that this each of x size are is nothing but the one only random variable. So this each x size, each x size are is nothing but Barnoli random variables. Okay, so you can easily find out uh, its mean variance, and uh, each exercise are also independent. They are also independent. In Dependent and uh, the formula we just proved that for variance. So, variance of x will be nothing but sum of variance of this x size. I will be one to gain because x size are independent and it, it, it is easy to find out what are variance of x size because it's binary but random variables. So, you can easily also find out that the variance of x size are. Nothing but expectation of xi square minus expectation of xi whole square, and this is uh, uh, you just find out this is nothing but expectation of what is what is expectation of xi square? Expectation of xi square, so xi square is nothing but expectation of x by, by definition of xi. So we can write down that this is expectation of. This is because you find out this is simple xi square is nothing but x size. This is random variables. So uh, they will be either one whenever the highest success is high trial is success and zero otherwise. And then uh, this is nothing. This is simple uh, with if p is the probability of success, then this is p minus p square. Okay, and hence uh, that actual variance of x is nothing but n times p minus p square or p into n into p into 1 minus p which we already proved long back ago for manual random variables so you can use the techniques uh, these new techniques also okay okay so now uh, we will discuss about uh, the other notation which i and the, uh, which was uh, in the name so the correlation so what is the correlation so suppose we have two random variable x and y so we defined the correlation coefficients by this row of x y and this is we defined by covariance of x y under root variance of x positive square root obviously the variance of y so this is uh, our definition of correlation so correlation actually uh, is actually um, measures uh, the degree of linearity so what does that mean that means whether x and y these two random variables are linearly related or not 
okay so that we will, we will discuss later little bit so uh, before that let us uh, find some properties so you can easily find out also so let me just then do it the correlation coefficients is always in between minus 1 and plus 1 okay how to prove this so uh, the proof so um, so let me prove one by one so suppose you start with this quantity variance of x minus sigma x so what is sigma x so sigma is x is nothing but the standard deviation of um, the random variable x and then sigma y you know this quantity is always non-zero and uh, non-negative so uh, here let me do it variance of x is sigma square of x and variance of y is sigma square of y okay so this variance of this new random variable x over sigma x plus y over sigma y is always non-negative variance cannot be uh, uh, negative so measure of dispersion okay and um, the formula of variance using the formula you can write down that this is nothing but variance of x over sigma x plus variance of y over sigma y plus twice covariance covariance of x over sigma x comma y over sigma y so this quantity is always non-negative okay now uh, note that uh, the first quantity you can write down as variance of x over sigma square this is the property of variance we learned long back ago then second quantity is variance of y time sigma square y which is also variance so um, the first term is also 1 this is also 1 and the third term is 2 times covariance of x y and the formula for covariance third formula of covariance gives you sigma x sigma y okay so uh, so we'll have 1 here from 1 here and from here 2 times this now note that what is this covariance of this by this this is nothing but rho of x y okay so then what does that mean so uh, so we'll have so obviously yeah so I should say that this quantity is this quantity is always greater than 0 this is always greater than 0 so this is 2 times 1 plus rho x y is greater than equal to 0 and that gives you that uh, rho x y is greater than equal to minus 1 okay so one part now to prove the other part rho x y is um, bounded by the upper bound is plus 1 how to prove so to prove the other part so you start with variance of x over sigma x minus y over sigma y this quantity is also non-negative and that gives you and if you go the similar process it will you can prove that x y so x y is greater than uh, it's bounded by x y is per bound by so less than equal to plus one okay so altogether you prove that rho x y is in between minus one plus one okay clear so the, this is these are the properties now uh, the question is that uh, what does it means if rho x y equal to plus 1 what does it means or rho x y equal to minus 1 what does it means 
so uh, so row x y is plus one actually tells you that okay so let me tell you top to top two so row x y plus one that actually means that you can have the linear relation between x and y which is y equal to something say uh, a x plus b okay and uh, this uh, uh, a is positive a is strictly positive so I should say strictly positive so what does that mean that mean graphically means that whenever x increase y is, y also increase something like that so whenever x x increase y is also increase so they are linear related okay and uh, um, similarly uh, rho x y is minus one that actually implies uh, that y equal to uh, they are also um, straight line a x plus b but in this case a is negative so what does that mean that means practically whenever x increase y decrease kind of this okay so x increase y decrease okay okay now conversely also one can prove uh, if uh, so number four property so if y equal to say ax plus b okay uh, a straight line then the row x y is plus minus one that depends on uh, uh, so depends on the sign of a okay this also you can prove conversely this is simple so how to prove it so whenever you have this kind of thing you find out what is covariance of uh, x y and then you know that there's nothing but you can write down the covariance of x comma a x plus b okay so uh, and then you use the formula for covariance and uh, you can easily find out uh, uh, the formula for uh, correlation coefficients so so these proofs are uh, i left and homework because these are a simple proof and you may i may ask you some of the proof in the final exam also clear yeah. so and um, yeah so before i end my today's lecture so i just want to make an announcement so as you know that uh, this uh, honorable prime minister uh, sinarendra modi ji already locked down for 21 days so probably we don't have time for our quiz so i am now planning to have quiz online so what does that mean so that quiz uh, so i will ask you um uh, some in end of some of my lectures i will ask you uh, say sim one simple question from my previous lectures previous of the lectures and uh, uh, i will expect you to solve those problem at your home because you guys all are in home so you can uh, you can take a white page or whatever page and write down your name and uh, entry number solve those problems and take a picture or whatever take it or do it scan with your phone whatever and send it to me okay and you need to send it to me um, um, before midnight so suppose if i am posting a question today so you need to send it uh, before midnight today so that i can um, check your answer and then you will get uh, marks for that so this so the number of question depends so it may be 
uh, 5 or 10 so that depends on my number of lectures and um, uh, that will sum off with your um, both uh, quiz 2 and also uh, maybe I can give some bonus marks on that okay so today's question the quiz question you can say that quiz quiz question 1 So uh, you remember uh, um, uh, we, we defined uh, this um, expectation formula for function of random variable. So suppose, so let me write down the question. So let x and y be discrete uniform uh, discrete uniform random variables random variables taking values say so one two to n okay and then uh, compute the simple and compute what is the value of expectation of mod of x minus y We find out that uh, complete what is mod of x minus y. X minus y are discrete random variable, discrete uniform, uh, and they are taking values uh, one up to n, and then you find out what is expectation of mod of x minus y. Okay, and the solution need to be so. Solution should contain. name entry number entry number and must be sent by must be sent by 25, 3, midnight. Okay, so, uh, so I'm expecting that you are reading uh, my uh, like online lecture notes and you will send me those things. Okay, so these are you are reading as a quiz question and those will be sending the right solutions uh, you can write down the solution of question one as uh, kind of your uh, in your email so you write down that um, in the uh, title of the email you can write down solution of question number one okay and you write down in the solution write down name and entry number and then uh, send it to me so you can take a photograph from your uh, mobile phone or you can scan it by mobile phone and send it to me in my email id okay by tonight okay and the question is simple so it will take only uh, two minutes uh, maximum two minutes to solve but i just want to check whether you are 
studying it home and not whatever like you ask me to send the uh, online uh, lecture notes so i also expect you guys from you guys that you are reading my lecture notes okay so that that's it to, that's ends to today's lectures and stay tuned in my youtube channel and uh, soon i will upload one more uh, lecture notes thank you